The News 10 Nightcast with Glenn Robinson, Ned Permi, and Ron Golnick. Good evening. It's been debated for months. Should parents of children enrolled in private schools get a tax credit? The Senate has decided the debate. It killed the tax credit measure, and that will affect some families in our area. Tonight, John Johnson talked with one such family. Parents who send their children to private schools like McGill-Tulin will not get the tax break they had hoped for. The plan was rejected by the Senate. It will mean that Tricia Hecker's parents will have to foot the entire $3,000 a year bill for her tuition, for her two brothers, Tim and James, and for her sister, Melanie. If the private schools or the parochial schools, whatever, would close in one day, the tax burden to the whole United States would be awesome. The Heckers say it's unfortunate for young parents who want to send their children too. We are disappointed that it hasn't passed, but it won't, you know, stop us from sending our children to these schools. The Heckers have seven children who have gone through or will be going through parochial schools. And for Tricia, she says she's grateful for the sacrifice. Well, I think good education always has its price, and I'm so glad that my parents were able to make the sacrifice. The family hasn't given up hope. They believe if the president stays behind the tax credit bill, it will eventually pass. John Johnson, News 10 Nightcast. Supporters of the plan say they'll bring up the measure again after Congress returns from its recess. After years of seeing Dan Alexander presiding at the Mobile County School Board meetings, the new board today elected a new president. She's Judy McCain, and serving as her vice chairman is another woman, board member Ruth Drago. The board will have its first regular agenda meeting on Wednesday. And the latest action taken by new Alabama legislators is being met with very mixed reviews tonight. Quickly passed voice, voice votes in both the House and Senate have given the lawmakers a 58% pay hike. That is, if Governor Wallace signs the measure. Tonight, what do you think? Should the governor approve the legislative pay hike? Our Teleton poll lines are open for your yes or no answer. Call 433-3757 in Mobile or 434-0405 in Pensacola. Our lines have been open all evening and we'll have the final results at the end of this newscast. By the way, the results will be sent to the governor's office. Besides approving their raise, the Alabama legislators did vote on a few other matters today. The State House and Senate committees gave the nod to Governor Wallace's prisoner restitution and release program, as well as giving committee support to the governor's plan to build new prisons. A simmering feud within the Mobile County Commission is about ready to come to a head tonight. Almost since he was elected, Commissioner Douglas Wicks has bucked against the other two commissioners. He claims the other two have conspired to railroad undesirable projects into his district over his objections. Today, Wicks asked to get an attorney general's opinion on whether he has veto power on projects within his district. I want to know. The public deserves to know where that buck stopped and by whom decisions are made. And at this system, you can't really tell because the buck doesn't stop with your representative. It's somewhere between the three or among the three. Wicks did get some support today for his claims. A citizens group from District 1, which is Wicks District, announced intentions to go to the federal courts with the same complaint. The group says the commissioners, such as Hayes and Wiley, have unconstitutionally denied the people of District 1 of equal representation. A jury in Louisiana has found feminist leader Jenny Fote innocent of murder charges. Fote, former president of the California chapter of the National Organization for Women, had been charged with killing an Argentine businessman 18 years ago. When the verdict was announced, Fote dropped her head to the defense table and in relief, then jumped up and began hugging her two attorneys. It's been a while since a steam passenger train traveled through our area, but still ahead on Nightcast, we'll tell you why this one came to town today. Following a fiery derailment today of a freight train near the Louisiana-Texas border, diesel fuel from four engines and a toxic chemical from barrels in at least one boxcar erupted in flames. Firefighters say they plan to spend most of the night keeping a very close eye on that wreckage. Reports tonight say the freight train slammed into a parked flat car and derailed. Tonight, the picket lines are still up at Greyhound bus stations across the country. There were more talks today between the unions and management, but neither side expects an agreement before the company resumes limited service tomorrow. First bus expected to roll, it will be about 6.15 tomorrow morning, a run between Mobile and New Orleans. However, throughout the day, there's been talk of that run being delayed. Earlier today, company officials were beefing up security around the buses that are in storage. 
The sound of the whistle and the hiss hissing and chugging of the old steam engine brings back some pleasant memories for many of us. I'm talking about the days of steam engine passenger service. For a short time earlier today, those memories were brought back to Mobile. Old 750, once the pride and joy of the Savannah and Atlanta Railroad, made a short stop at the state docks to be cold and watered. The train was on its way to the New Orleans for the World's Fair there. And local railroad history buffs say there's much interest in the old train. Oh, yeah. We have a local chapter right here that we have 37 members. We meet once a month. There's a lot of history behind the old steam engine. And you'd be surprised. Some of the youngsters are now starting to come back and want to know about it. When the train arrives in New Orleans, it and its two high-powered diesels will make a short run to Hattiesburg and back to New Orleans. Sort of a pleasure trip for its passengers. Each Wednesday night here on TV10, we present youngsters who are looking for adoptive homes. However, behind each Wednesday's child report is a great deal of work by a photographer and editor. Tonight, we thought that we'd give you a better idea of what goes on behind the scenes of taping each Wednesday's child segment by showing you some of the outtakes during a recent trip. always a lot of fun. One youngster you won't see on Wednesday's Child is this one coming up. Eric Maurice was born today in a local hospital weighing in at 8 pounds and 10 ounces. Eric Maurice is the son of Clyde Dennis who works here at TV 10 in our traffic department. Congratulations. An earthquake hits Hawaii. We'll have the story for you when we come back. Also ahead, our Tele 10 lines are still open for your answer to the Alabama legislative pay raise question. Cold tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked Nellis, is it going to get cold tomorrow? I said, no, it's going to warm up tomorrow, but it's going to get cold tonight. We're going to get down a little cooler than we thought. Frost is a good possibility really? by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Mm. Listen, we've got, we've been getting already starting to get some cards and letters in for our TV 10 Christmas Express. If you're 15 years of age and older and would like to win this Honda Express Senior, it is very simple to do. All you have to do is send your name, address, telephone number, and your age, if you're 15 and older, to this address, TV 10, Christmas Express, P.O. Box 1548, Mobile. We're going to get down around 34 degrees wow. in the city. 43 right now. We're going to drop down about another 10 degrees or so tonight. 41 in Pensacola. Humidity is 70%. Barometric pressure. 30, 16, and holding steady. Winds are out of the northwest at 6 to 7 miles an hour, and clear skies, and of course, with those light winds, that is the problem with frost tonight. 60 was the high today, last night's low, 39, and we have had no rain showers, but if you want some, we got some for you on the way, unfortunately, for the weekend. We have a storm system brewing, and it's been brewing, a slow mover way up in the northeastern United States. You can see the large, massive cloud cover stretching all the way from the Atlantic, curling back into the Ohio Valley region. Snow is expected again from the Appalachians northward. Clear skies over the central and southeastern United States, as you can see, but look here. Another extensive area of cloudiness and showers building. Actually, this is the third Pacific storm that has moved into the northwestern states in the past several days and it has been bringing a lot of rain. They've had over seven inches of rain from Olympia, Washington down into the coastal sections of California. Extensive flooding has been reported to streams and farmlands up there. It is a mess and on top of that another one right behind it. That same system is going to be plaguing our weather by the weekend. That storm system that I showed you on the satellite picture by tomorrow will push from the northwest into the central plain states. The low pressure area will be located 
located over South Dakota. The trailing cold front right on down into the southwest. Showers and thunderstorms will begin all the way from the Dakotas down into Kansas and back behind that system. Winter storm watches are in effect for the mountainous regions of Colorado and Utah. Again, that cold front will be pushing our way slowly and looks like it will affect our weather by the weekend with warmer temperatures and a chance of rain Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because it's moving pretty slow right now. Take a look at radar. No shower activity on the outside. Clear skies and light winds and 43 in Mobile, 41 in Pensacola, 45 Fort Walton Beach, 42 degrees. The reading in uh, Montgomery, cool. Meridian, 35 already, 47 on the Mississippi coast. And in New Orleans, 45 degree reading. Winds are going to be out of the northeast tonight, becoming easterly tomorrow, and then shifting to the southeast by tomorrow night. 10 to 15 knots, seas 4 to 6 feet. Both the winds and seas will be decreasing a little bit by tomorrow. A low tide at 718. That'll be tomorrow morning, and a high tide at 1041 tomorrow evening. Fish and Game Graph has two excellent periods and is very easy to remember from 9 to noon and 9 till midnight, mornings and evening. It's going to be the best for tomorrow. Tonight's forecast, a frost warning is in effect for the Gulf Coast region, clear and cold and a low temperature of 34 degrees with light winds. For tomorrow morning, mostly sunny skies and cool with a temperature at 8 o'clock in the morning, 42. For tomorrow afternoon, partly cloudy skies and mild with a high temperature, a little warmer tomorrow, 67 degrees. For tomorrow night, once again, increasing cloudiness and a low of 48 degrees, not nearly as bad. And then the showers will move in. Scattered showers by Friday afternoon with a high of 75. Increasing clouds and lower temperatures and scattered rain showers Saturday and on Sunday. Glenn? Thanks, Ned. Tonight, authorities in Hawaii are warning residents of possible aftershocks after today's earthquake in the main island of Hawaii. It was the strongest in eight years, measuring 6.7 on the Richter scale. There was extensive damage and some minor injuries. The quake was centered between two large active volcanoes. Tonight, Dave Stricker continues his special assignment on the Anchorman reunion. Dave's report follows sports. Stay with us. I know it's the middle of November, but still some yeah. very important baseball awards. Yeah, this is today. the last of the biggies, and uh, it goes to a player whose father is a coach with a team. I guess I gave it all away, but it took Cal Ripken Jr. <laughs> just two years to win one of baseball's most prestigious awards. Ripken, the rookie of the year last season in the American League, was named that league's most valuable player today. He batted 318, got hits like that. He drove in 102 runs, and he clubbed 27 homers. There's one of them. He also played in all of Baltimore's 162 games, and he was a catalyst behind the Orioles' World Series championship. Murphy is just one victory away from being named the top team in the TV10 high school football rankings for 1983. The Panthers sit atop that elite group again this week, but they must beat second-ranked Theodore Friday night to claim that top spot. Foley is third with Fairhope fourth and B.C. Rain fifth. St. Paul's has moved into six. The Saints are still alive in the state playoffs. Viger is next, followed by Williamson, Baker, and Citronelle. Once again, our final TV10 Top 10 High School Football Poll of the Week next week. And Murphy and Theodore will lock horns for the second time this year at Ladd Stadium Friday night. And the winner will be crowned the TV10 champ. They'll also be alive in the playoff. Eric Wesson has more. Well, if you're wondering why the Murphy Panthers seem so relaxed despite the loss of star running back Michael Pierce, here's one of the big reasons. Junior Kenny Allen is more than a capable replacement. We've just got to adjust to somebody else's talent and uh, give somebody else an opportunity. It's like last week we gave Kenny Allen a chance and Kenny responded very positively and did a good job for us. So I believe this is our chance to show folks that we can win without Mike. You know, I'm not down to Mike because he's a good player, but, you know, this is our our opportunity. There are some who think that Murphy will have a home field advantage playing at Ladd Stadium, but in reality, the Theodore Bobcats are not complaining. Is it going to make that much of a difference, do you think, anyway? I don't think so. Uh, I've been here five years, and our record at Ladd Stadium in the five years is 91. And uh, that percentage wise is a better record we have than we have on this piece of ground I'm standing on. Coach Douglas is right. Ladd Stadium will not dictate who wins or loses Friday night. Only the players and coaches can control that. Eric Weston, Sports 10. The NBA refs are still on strike, and that's caused some problems for some hot-headed coaches who can't seem to adjust to the uh, substitute officials. Here's Mo McCone of the San Antonio Spurs last night. He throws water and coke all over those gathered around the scorer's table. Did you toss water at somebody? That's what someone said, and I probably did. <laughs> oh, now throwing. Oh. 
Coke and water, and he's gone. He's out of here. I'm not really bad mathing the rest. It's playing referee. Oh, I have no gripe with the officiating. Cone, with no gripe of the officiating, was ejected from the game and assessed with two technical fouls. I'll be glad when they bring the refs back. A good boxing card with some uh, local fighters at Fairgrounds Arena tonight at West Mobile. This is a preliminary bout between Ryan White in the black trunks versus Jimmy Mitchell in the red. Watch Ryan here. He gets in a couple of good uh, left-hand punches there. White winning a unanimous four-round decision tonight. We'll have the feature events tomorrow night at 6. They're still in progress. We now have for you the final results of tonight's Tele-10 poll. Our question was, do you think Governor Wallace should sign the measure giving Alabama lawmakers a 58% pay hike of the more than 1,300 calls, which is a record here at TV10 that we received throughout the evening? 33% said the governor should sign the bill. However, 67% disagreed and said the governor should not sign the measure. We thank you for participating in the poll, and we'll be passing along tonight's results to the governor's office. How better to end Dave Straker's th six-part series than to bring you up to date on the whereabouts of TV10's three most recently departed anchormen. Tonight, a look at what happened to Wayne Barnett, Don Schroeder, and Bill Stewart. We at Channel 10 feel... Wayne Barnett, a native of Loosedale, Mississippi, anchored Channel 10's Newsbeat in 1978 and 79. Perhaps because he rarely looked at the road while he drove, in 1979, Wayne was promoted to a desk job, news director. One of Wayne's last on-air appearances was during Hurricane Frederick. If you had a battery-operated TV, you may have seen this. Wayne has moved up in the world. He's now news director of WTMJ Channel 4 in Milwaukee. They don't let him on the air there either. Maybe that's why some of his employees don't know who he is. Who are you? That's enough. Oh, you're the news director. <laughs> yeah. Then there was Pascagoula native Bill Stewart, who came to TV10 in early 1979. Bill was the only anchor man I've ever known who could read a serious story and not lose his place even though he had a fly buzzing around his face. When the hurricane hit TV 10, Bill showed he could be quick on his feet. Bill made sure the first thing he saved was his resume tapes. And it could be one of these very tapes that got Bill his current job in Denver. broadcast news gathering team in Colorado. This is News Center for tonight with Bill Stewart, Stephanie White, Steve Anderson, and Jeff Hollinger. Good evening, I'm Bill Stewart, and here's what's happening. US Bill's co-anchor for a while at TV10 was this man, Don Schroeder. Don, of course, learned how to anchor news at Channel 5. Then later, he polished his skills at TV10. In August, he, too, moved on. Now, the Wave TV Evening News. Good evening, I'm Christy Callahan. And I'm Don Schroeder. A startling announcement this afternoon from Indianapolis. Public service Wave TV is in Louisville, Kentucky. Don says he likes it there, but don't rule out another return to the Gulf Coast. After all, there is still one station left that he hasn't worked at. Dave Straker, News 10 Nightcast. How better move over, I guess. That's right. Ron and I are still here, and we yep. work with all those people. Every you, one of them, right I, back to Carlton Cordell. Right back to Carlton and Jim Cobus. And Matt Lytle. And Danny Trainer. I hope you all realize the hot seat in this. That's season. right. You got it. <laughs> You're on you. it now. <laughs> hey, we got Get a good forecast. Get those tapes together. We got a good <laughs> forecast. Going to be cool tonight. We've got some frost in the forecast tonight. Temperatures are going to be dipping down once again around 34 degrees. And it could be a little mm. cooler than that in North Mobile and Baldwin County. But tomorrow, warmer temperatures with sunny skies high around 67 and rain for the weekend. Mm. Some great NFL bloopers tomorrow. Good bloopers tomorrow night at 6 and 10. We usually have them at 10. We get a special sports blooper extra at 6 tomorrow night. Be here. All righty. <laughs> we'll look for it. Be there. Be there. Be here. Just watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks, guys. It's all tomorrow night at 6 and 10. For all the morning news, be sure to join Glenda Webb for Day Sign at 11. Thanks for watching and from all of us here at TV 10. Good night.